Hello students, I am Dr. Arpita De. A very warm welcome to my plant physiology lessons. The topic for today's discussion is cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. We will talk about how absorption of light leads to excitation of chlorophyll, the path of electrons down the electrochemical gradient where the final electron acceptor NADP plus gets reduced. So now let's come to the lesson. Before we start, let's first know what is phosphorylation or photophosphorylation. Photophosphorylation from the very word you can understand that it has got something to do with light and addition of Phosphorylation is the method by virtue of which harvested light energy is generating energy currency from ADP. Now what is this energy currency? This energy currency is your ATP. So in simple words we can say that the quantum energy that is absorbed from the sun is being converted to ATP from ADP. This process is aided by ATP synthase, an electrochemical gradient generated by electron transport chain. Now, before we delve into the topic, let's first know certain points which will be very useful in understanding the entire lecture. Now light is harvested by pigment molecules and the energy is transferred or funneled by resonance mechanism. This particular phenomenon is known as sensitized fluorescence. Photosystems, okay, PS1 and PS2 are complexes of proteins and pigments. So these are complexes which are made up of two components. One is protein and the other is pigments. What do they do? They help or they serve to harvest light energy and thus take part in the process of generation of ATP and NADPH. This entire process of photophosphorylation is light dependent and that is the very reason why is it called photo. Otherwise it would have been called phosphorylation process. So these are the last two very important points to be kept in mind. Light reaction occurs in Grena and light independent reaction occurs in stroma. Specialized chlorophyll of the reaction center, they get excited by photon absorption that cause ejection of an electron from the ground state to the higher energy level. Okay, now what are the reaction centers? The reaction centers are categorized into two types. One is P680, the other is P700. P680 absorbs light whose wavelength is near 680. This is also known as photosystem 2. The other is P700 absorbing light whose wavelength is near about 700 nanometer. Therefore, it is also known as PS1. The two photosystems are linked together by components of electron transport chain that carry the electrons down the electrochemical gradient. The path of the reductant is followed by tracing the flow of electrons. 
the oxidant involved with oxygen evolution is provided by photosystem 2. Excitation is funneled from the antenna system to the reaction center. Electron, as I have just now said, is ejected from the ground state and it travels through the components of electron transport chain. Now when the electron is ejected from the ground state to the higher energy level, an electron hole is created in PS2. The electron hole thus created in PS2 is filled by electron from tyrosine which gets electron from water via the manganese ions. Let's analyze this Z scheme of electron. Why do we call it a Z scheme? It is a zigzag pattern that is being followed by the electron and it also resembles the English letter Z. If you look like this, it resembles the English letter Z. Light incident here will excite the specialized chlorophyll in the reaction center. What will it do? It will become excited and an electron will be ejected from the ground state to a state whose energy is higher. Now, theophytin will be accepting the electron, right? Now the pheophytin will transfer electron to QA and QB. This QA and QB are plus 2 quinone molecules. Electron then travels down to cytochrome B6F complex over here. Fine. Where from it goes to plus 2 cyanin which in turn reduces P700. This PC stands for plus 2 cyanin which will eventually reduce P700 or PS1. Now this excited electron from P700 goes to this molecule. This is again getting excited. It will also eject the electron to from the ground state to higher energy level. Now who will accept this? This will be accepted by A1. This A1 is a quinone molecule. Electron will then be traveling down through a series of iron sulfur proteins to pyridoxin. FD stands for pyridoxin and it will finally reduce NADP to NADPH with the help of FNR, this one. What is this FNR? Pyridoxin NADP reductase. So finally what will happen? NADP will get reduced to NADPH. Fine. Now let's talk about something very crucial. You can see cytochrome B6F complex over here. The cytochrome B6F complex contains B type cytochrome cytochrome F and a risky iron sulfur protein and two quinone oxidation reduction sites. Okay, let's again repeat what are the four components. Two B type cytochrome, cytochrome F, a risky FES protein and two quinone oxidation reduction sites. Electron is transferred from plastro hydroquinone to one of the two B type cytochrome. Okay, and the iron sulfur protein. So, two electrons will be transferred. One is transferred to one of the two B type ones. Okay, and the other to that FESR. 
where from it travels to cytochrome F plus to cyanin and finally reduces P700 of PS1. This was your linear electron flow. Fine. Now electron from one B type cytochrome is transferred to another B type cytochrome which reduces a phenol to semiphenol. Please keep in mind it reduces a In cyclic electron transfer, what is happening? Another plus 2 hydroquinone is oxidized with the transfer of one electron to that risky iron sulfur protein which finally goes to P700 over here. P700 of PS1. The second electron travels through the 2B type cytochrome and reduce the semiquinone to plastohydroquinone. So cyclic electron flow is coupled to proton coupling into the lumen which is used in ATP synthesis but here water is not oxidized to reduce NADP. Okay. Here in cyclic electron transfer, what you see when electron is traveling from cytochrome B6 to these region uh, to B cytochrome F and finally to P700, we get to see generation of ATP. This is cytochrome BF and this is cytochrome B6F complex. When it is traveling, through this complex, we see the generation of ATP here. So, oxidation of water leads to release of protons in the lumen by PS2. Cytochrome B6F also releases protons into the lumen that contributes to the electrochemical proton gradient. Diffusion of protons to ATP synthase down the electro potential gradient is used to synthesize ATP. So this is the point that is telling us about ATP synthesis. So this is a simplified path of electron that will that is ultimately reducing NADP to NADPH. So this is how we complete our discussion on cyclic and non-cyclic electron transport. In case you have any confusion or doubts, please feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll try my level best to solve your problems. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon in our next video. Thank you.